Hi Mo, how are you? I'm good. I'm good, thank you. Hello. Good, good. Um, you all, your UFC debut was an incredible performance, uh, and then now you fight a guy who's a newcomer. Uh, was it a bit anticlimactic for you? Were you hoping to get somebody in the rankings or something like that? I couldn't get anybody in the rankings. I don't think anyone accepted it, like uh, because I'm on rank fighter, and the Charles is is a good opponent, LFA champion on like UFC fight pass, and uh, it's, it's good guy to beat. And there's been a lot of kind of trash talk between the two of you. You have a tendency of kind of building your fights with your opponents, getting people to get excited. But uh, is this kind of just uh, regular trash talk or is it personal with him? Not really. I just posted a picture with AK-47 on Twitter and the guy got too emotional. I didn't know fighters could get emotional over this. You know, we are men's. We like cars, guns and and stuff like this. You know, it's, it's nothing that I'm going to shoot him in London. Gunin stays in Dagestan. I'm here with have my knuckles. <laughs> have you ran into him at all? Yes, I have seen him, and uh, he's, he's like he's seen me, but didn't say anything. So I told him keep same energy. You keep same uh, like stupid jokes on Twitter, you know. <laughs> Let's go back to your uh, UFC debut. I spoke to you before uh, you got signed to the UFC and you were talking about turning down the Contender Series and a lot of people thought you were crazy, right? Uh, but then you said, I deserve a direct route. I want to fight in London. You kind of manifested everything. So how did it feel to kind of just go through that moment, getting that quick finish and, uh, you know, bursting onto the scene? I always believed that um, I did amazing amateur career. I'm not like, uh, I'm not talking because I'm some cocky guy, but by results, I've done this. And I wasn't the uh, guy to to get on the contender series. I, I deserve straight road to UFC with big hype and the skills behind the hype too. Not just like I'm I'm the best and let me fight, you know. But um, it's it's good that they they give me chance to to fight on UFC straight without contender series. Thank you. Yeah. Mark, how do you top? that performance from your, your UFC debut. I mean, that couldn't have gone much better for you, right? Amazing. First, uh, I want to show myself more. I had amazing camp, but this fight, I try to show myself more so people don't think it's it's a hype. They want to see my skills. The, those people that s didn't see me fighting on Brave and I'm off scenes. And uh, you mentioned IMAF there. You're, you're fresh new in the UFC, just one fight in the UFC. But you've got a wealth of experience fighting in IMAFs and in, in elite level competition in the amateurs. Can you explain uh, to everybody here just how valuable that experience is that you're, you, you know, you're carrying all of that experience into the octagon in the UFC? Uh, I don't think you can compare this experience to anything else, especially like um, a, a lot of MMA fighters, they're fighting nobodies, and they'll be like 10 and 0, but they, when they face Somebody, somebody who had amateur career. It's like boxing, you know, like Anthony Joshua doing good in professional career because he, he competed in, in amateur a lot. Lamachenko competed in amateur. So I think MMA is you have to you have to start somewhere before jumping to professional. And um, the slower you build, the stronger you you will be. I think. Yeah. Now, when you came into the UFC, you had a name ready. You know, you wanted Cody Durden, you called him out, you got the fight, and then you picked up the win. You've just said now that you've, you have problems getting an opponent for this one. If you get the win on Saturday night, do you have another name ready so that you're able to make that progression and you sort of make it happen for yourself? Jeff Malina, rank 15 now. Um, Tim Elliott, I know Tim Elliott doesn't turn fight down. Last time I called him out and I didn't know he had an uh, opponent. And uh, now he's free. I'm, I'm free for October, November, Madison Square Garden, Abu Dhabi, October. So whatever date he is free, I'm free too. So I think this is good opponents. There's Matt Schnell, just beat my, my good neighbor, Sue. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Thanks a lot. Mo, um, just here. You know, you, you fought all over the world, with, you know, in, in amateurs. Were you... You know, what did you think about coming back to, to London for this one? I think you seen yourself in March. I think it was best event I have ever been. I have attended UFC London in 2016. 
when Michael Bisping fought against Anderson Silva and my, my friend Rustam Khabilov on Norma Park. And um, it was similar, but I think March was an amazing event. I think this one will be even better. So I'm looking forward to it. And have things changed for for you? Obviously, I know obviously you're a well-decorated fighter. You know this was your UFC debut. Have, has anything changed for for you since March? A lot of attention, but that's why I went to American Top Team in America. Stay in in the, in the gym, live without distractions, and um, just stay focused because my goal is not far. And. Um, is it true? I think I saw Wayne Rooney and, and Anthony Joshua reach out to you after your fight and, and give some comments to you. Is that right? That's right. And uh, Donald Trump Jr. too. <laughs> <laughs> what did it mean to you to get you know that kind of uh, that kind of uh, acknowledgement from those kind of uh, icons? It's normal. I think it's normal. You know, when when they're up there, like legends, they they see. They see it's no easy work, and they respect the upcoming fighters. And you know, with um, Charles Johnson, is there anything you know? Obviously, he is a former LFA champion. Is there anything that stands out to you about him? Ah, uh, he's an okay striker, good cardio, but he never faced wrestler and a grappler. He has faced uh, strikers, and striking I think easier than than any grappling and, and wrestling sessions, I think. And obviously with that being said, how do you how do you see it playing out? I think, I believe round two finish, uh, just take his soul out and finish him. Thank you. Oh, just down to your eye here. Sorry if you're asked, I was just out at the start. Um, I believe you turn 22 next week, is it? Yes, that's right. So that means obviously we spoke about you becoming the youngest champion. <coughs> Realistically, if you wanted to beat John Jones' record, it'd be a year from now. Is that something that you think is realistic? It will be 2024, end of the March. So I think I will fight for the title in UK again. So 2024, I've got, I've got pretty much time. Mm. And you spoke there about um, going to Bisping's fight in 2016. Obviously, you were here a few months ago, you're here again. You know, it's six years on from you watching the crowds and now one could argue that you're you know, one of the stars of the show. So what does it mean being in that same arena six years later? And it's something that you knew when you went to Bisping's fight? Some of what I knew? Is it like when you watched Bisping against Silva in 2016, did you kind of envision yourself being in the cage? Yes, of course. Of course. Uh, I think Stefan's truth also posted. I have, I have told him I will be there soon. And I think he posted this after UFC London. I, b I believed. I believed. And... Uh, um, I just imagine myself there. It's, it's. I don't. F I don't. Uh, f at the moment, for me, it's it's all normal. It's a cage, opponent arena. I, I've been there already, so it's nothing too excited for me. You know? mm. And you spoke there about training in uh, ATT, and you're actually training with Cody. Um, is there any particular fighters that you know you were coached at by ATT that really gave you some good advice over there in a in Florida? Coach? Yeah. Anyone in. American top team that really helped you out. I know you were training with Jorge Masvidal, doing wrestling with him, and I think you said that when he'd come in, he'd obviously watch you like spar. His, the times kind of went together. He'd always see you spar. So how was your time, at American top team? Amazing, to be honest. Um, like Mike Brown, like Parumpa, like so th those are a lot of coaches on the mats. I really enjoyed the time over there, and um, you know Dan Lambert, he comes to the gym, watches training us, the owner. It's amazing, and the, the previous camp I had in Bahrain, which if if I fight in Abu Dhabi, I'm gonna do a camp in Bahrain again at KHK team, yeah. And just one more, it's a bit of a different one. I saw on uh, Twitter the other day, someone was asking, all the fighters on this card, a lot of, you know, obviously have, have English flags, but you actually have the Great Britain flag. Is that something that you like, ask for, or did the UFC just give you, you know, the Great, Great Britain flag? I didn't born in England, so for me, I ha I hold British passport, right? So, for me, I represent whole UK. Uh, I don't play this like I'm Welsh, I'm English, I'm all this. I just represent the the whole Britain, you know. I don't care about all this stuff. Awesome, thank you.